Hello everyone and welcome to the Altium On Track podcast. Recently, I had the opportunity to attend and give presentations at PCB West and this year's conference was incredible. It shattered attendance records, featured mind-blowing exhibitors and presentations, and as always, I had no shortage of illuminating conversations with the world's leading minds in PCB design and manufacturing. So we decided to record a few of those conversations in this special series series of episodes of the Altium On Track podcast. Today's episode is with Neil Chamberlain. He is a product specialist at Polar Instruments. We chatted about Neil's background, how he got involved with Polar, the challenges of finding substitute materials, copper roughness, and much more. As always, be sure to check the links in the description to learn more about Neil, as well as get deeper insight to the topics we cover. Thanks so much for watching, and please enjoy this special edition of the Altium On Track podcast from PCV West 2024. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special edition of the Altium On Track podcast here from PCV West. I am here with Neil Chamberlain, product specialist at Polar Instruments. I know there are quite a few Altium users out there who use Polar, so very excited to talk to you today. Thanks for being here. It's a pleasure, absolute pleasure to be here. So if you could just briefly maybe tell us how you got into electronics and how you got into working for Polar. Oh my word, that's a long yeah. story. I'm an old man. I can, <laughs> when, I, when I first started, I used to look at people with gray beards and think, oh, never. But, but here I am with a gray beard. <laughs> um, so I started working for IBM. I, I was an IBM graduate um, way, way back. And um, I started working in their engineering departments. I, I then moved into their procurement departments. I spent a lot of time uh, working in procurement of, of PCBs and PCBAs. Um, and then an opportunity arose to, to come and jump across the desk, I guess, and move from, from buying into, per, into sales. So uh, then I started with Polar and that's been where I've been for the, for the last time. The rest is history. The rest is history, as they say. So for those who aren't familiar with Polar, maybe tell us about the company and what uh, some of the products are. Yeah, so I mean, Polar, we've been around a long time. We're getting very excited that uh, next year is our 50th anniversary. Really? Yeah, so we've been around for a long time and we've been, been through a lot of uh, developments of products. And, and we started off um, making uh, test equipment for printed circuit board assemblers. Um, and then we've moved into test equipment for printed circuit board manufacturers, uh, fabricators. Um, we started making uh, time domain reflectometers to sit at the end of the end of the manufacturing process. And it, as part of that, we 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 built these instruments and we started to develop some software that would allow the front end engineers to work to do a little bit of simulation. And we de we developed these tools with. Um, the equations that you would find in the back of Waddell. I know you know yeah. Waddell very yeah. well. Uh, Waddell is a, a technical book that's been around since the 70s. Um, and we put those equations in a little pot. But the problem you have with printed circuit boards is the geometries are very, very small. So those, those equations, when you get them down to very small geometries, they kind of start to fall down around the, around the edges. So what we were left with is, we saw there was a market for a, a field, for a, a, a development tool for front end engineers, but we ended up um, needing to do a field solver. So what we did was we created a field solver, uh, which was very well received. But what we found is that the design engineers wanted to use the, 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 fi the same field solver the fabricators used. So now our products are really designed specifically for design engineers to communicate with their fabricators. Because the other problem is that the supply chain between the fabricator and the, and the designer is so long, there's so many people in there, that if you don't specify your PCBs properly, you, you may not get what you think you're gonna get. So that's really where we sit in that ability to communicate between the, the designer on one hand and the fabricator, knowing that you've gone through procurement people and EMS, EMS suppliers and all sorts of people that maybe don't always have the quality and the, and the, as their main motivation for the tool. Sure, sure. And I think it makes a lot of sense to have a tool that the fabricator is also going to use to check your design to make sure that everything is consistent from end to end. Because when you get that mismatch between what the designer sees in one tool and then the fabricator sees in a different tool, everyone's pointing their fingers at each other, you know, this guy's wrong, no, that guy's wrong, and I'm sure everything could go haywire pretty yeah. quick. Yeah, so, so one, of the, one of the major issues is that 
really nobody single sources PCBs anymore. Sure. So when you send your design to a, to into procurement, into somebody who's going to buy the PCBs, they have to go to three or four different people. They could be in your time zone, they could not be in your time zone. You don't really, as an engineer, you don't really get control over where that goes. Every, procure, every fabricator that, that, that they go to will have a different commercial relationship with a different laminate supplier. Yeah. So you can be very, you can be very, very tight on the material that you that you say I need to make this board with, and that's perfectly okay. But you're adding cost by doing that. Sure. If you can give your fabricator some freedom in in the material they choose, then then that's fine. The problem being is that only you, as the designer, can decide whether. Material A is really a substitute for material B or really a substitute for material C. Sure. So, so you may want the same part number, the same part number may have to come in with three different sets of materials in it. Right. They all need to work in exactly the same way from your point of view. But you're the guy, as the designer, you're the guy that's responsible for making sure all those three boards work. And so in terms of specifying those materials, I'm, it sounds like this is going beyond just slash sheets. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Slash sheets have their place. Right. Slash sheets have their place, but really, a lot of OEMs will need to have um, approved vendor lists right. for what materials they will approve, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of OEMs will do the work to say, we can use this material, we can't use this material. Sure. That restricts the procurement department as to which fabricator they can go to, because some fabricators will be able to use different materials to other materials. What we do inside our tool is we allow you to download the material libraries, so you download all the data sheets from the material library, from the, from the material manufacturer, and you as the designer can then say, well, how is my board going to perform with this particular material. Right. How is it going to perform with that material? And we can start to analyze how those different materials are going to affect your, affect your finished product. Now, every time you, you change the material, you change the cost. Sure. You know, you go for a higher grade material, you'll change the cost of the board. Sometimes that's absolutely necessary for the design that you're doing, and sometimes that's over engineering. Right. And, and again, only you as the designer can really say whether that's required or not. Um, uh, to, to spend the extra money on, on the, this particular quality of material or not. Sure. And that's what our tools are really helping you to do. Is to We can produce you data to say, this material will perform this way in your particular stack up, and this material will perform that way. And you might say, yeah, that's fine. We can yeah. work with that. And you might say, actually, no, I've got an issue here at five gigahertz or whatever it might be, um, and, and we, need to, we need to alter that material. But it's having that information and having that ability to make that decision that isn't really left in the in the procurement engineer's hands and isn't really left in the EMS sure. buyer's hands, it needs to be left in your hands. And the only way you can deal with that as a designer is to is to be able to analyze that material. Sure. Now, speaking of analyzing materials, um, you did give a lunch and learn yesterday. I did. And yes. one of the big uh, topics was copper roughness. That's correct. Maybe yeah. if you could just give us some of the high level points on what she talked about with regard to copper roughness. Okay, so you will see when you look at data sheets, certainly for, for cores, that they will give you a, a copper roughness number. Right. And I did a little bit of um, discussion about why there's a copper roughness and why you have a, a rough side and a, and a smooth side. But the bit that's misunderstood, I think, in the industry is in the fabrication process, there's another level of roughness. So there's a micro etch process that, goes, that they go through. So if you look at the data sheet from any of the material manufacturers, they'll give you a roughness. Mm -hmm. But actually, it's also very fabricator dependent because the micro etch process will add another roughness onto that to make, it, to make the board stick. As I say, there's a simple rule in PCB manufacturing and that is the, better, the rougher the copper, the, the better, better it, it sticks. sticks yeah. and, and you really, obviously you don't want your board to delaminate through the, through the, when you put it in reflow, but you also would like your copper to be nice and glass smooth and those two things are a compromise. Sure. So that's what we were talking about. Is, so in good stack up design, you can work out where the rough side is, and right. you can work out where the smooth side is, or the, or the uncontrolled side, more uncontrolled side in the fabricating shop. If you go to your PCB fabricator, if you've got a good relationship with your PCB fabricator, they'll be able to tell you what roughness they add in their micro etch process. But again, manufacturer A and manufacturer B and manufacturer C will all have a different number. Okay. That's excellent. So you can analyze all of this stuff in the tool. Absolutely. Where can people go to learn more about the tools you guys offer? So, well, we have, um, we have we have a global organization. So we have an organization in Singapore, based in Singapore, that, that the Asian 
uh, that supports our Asian market. I look after our European market, so you can come to me in, in our European market. And then we have a, an office in Oregon where, they, where you can go, we've got technical guys in Oregon. Um, and I've, I've met some of those technical guys. Yeah, well, we're, they're, you're both <laughs> Portland guys, you yeah. see? So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So that's part of our heritage is um, part of the reason that we make TDRs and part of the reason that we're in Portland is because we have a lot of tech guys that, that have, that have uh, come from, we've come from that from Awesome, that place. awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here with us. Super informative. I hope everybody will go to polarinstruments.com and learn more about Polar's products. Of course, you can find Neil Chamberlain on LinkedIn. Are Absolutely. you okay with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Contact Neil Chamberlain yeah. to learn more or about Or just come to products. me directly. Absolutely. And if you're in the Santa Clara area, anytime, come to PCB West because I always see you guys here at PCB West. Thanks everybody for watching. We're going to sign off and go do some more interviews. Don't stop learning, stay on track, and we'll see you next time. Thanks everybody. Bye.